So today we're looking at how to manage the filtering and highlighting within your Deneb visuals. What am I talking about? Let's take a look. So two visuals. One is a standard visualization from Power BI. The other one is our Deneb visual. So what happens? This, our standard Power BI visualization, is going to, as you can see here, filter, or oh, sorry, it's not true. It's going to highlight, or at least should, my Dena visualization. I click on it, as you can see, nothing happens. Why is that? When I click on this one, it does, as you'd expect, filter the other visualization. However, when I click on it, it's not highlighting the value. So that's two different methods of highlighting that we're talking about here. So let's fix it. Let's make it work. We're going to go and we're going to edit our visualization. We're going to take it from there. And what you want to do, you want to go to your settings, ensure that your expose cross highlight values for measures are switched on. It's very important. Otherwise it won't work. That value is right there. So if you don't know what any of this is, what any of this means, no worries. Check out the previous videos. They will teach you how to get to where we are now, which is a really basic bar chart. And from this basic bar chart, we're going to add that functionality and it's going to be cool. And it's actually going to give you a chance to do things that you can't do with your standard Power BI visuals. Let's go. First thing, love me a little bit of copy and pasting. So I am indeed going to take this first layer and I'm going to copy it. What I'm not going to do though, is paste it. Not yet anyway. Before we get to that part, what I'm going to do is look at a couple of values in that layer. This here is our color. I'm going to change that to a much lighter color. So I'm going to say E3, E3, E3. And I'm going to say the opacity shouldn't be one, but rather something a lot lower. So let's say 0 0.3. I'm going to make those changes. I'm going to apply those changes now. What you're going to see is, or maybe not see, are the actual bars. They've kind of all but, you know, disappeared there. You can still kind of see the rough outline of them, but that's intentional. And that'll come back into play a little bit later. So hold that thought. We'll get there. Now, what I am going to do is paste what we just copied. So a comma, paste and we're done. Apply those changes and you'll see we're back to that original view that we first had. Why? And this is always important to remember. We have this layer, so this new layer, the second layer, sitting on top of the previous layer. Yeah, so as you layer stuff, you're literally putting things on top of other things. So we have all of this is sitting on top of that first layer. So, what I want to do, first of all, is get rid of this opacity one. Because we don't need the opacity to be set as one, because when it's one, first of all, it makes no sense because that's the default, so you don't need to specify it. And also, what I want to do is set the opacity to be based on a condition, to be based on a rule. And we're going to do that now. We're going to go into our encoding, and we're going to say, opacity, but we're going to get rid of that one. We don't want the one to be there because it's going to be based on a rule. And this is when we start to specify what the opacity is going to be, what the rule is going to be. And it's going to say opacity and we're basing it on a condition. So we just write condition. Now we're going to say the condition is a test. So this is us specifying what the rule is going to be. The test is going to be based on a specific field within our data. Now, here's something quite interesting. The field that we're going to use doesn't really exist as a field in the data that we've specified. The only two fields we have in this data set are called total points, which is our value, and the team ABR, which is what we're using as, the, as our current Y axis. We're going to use a field which is called underscore underscore, and you'll see as a type the word selected that it doesn't come up to be clicked on. 
it doesn't come up in the IntelliSense, you have to manually type this. So field is underscore underscore selected. What is that? Well, this can be seen in the documentation of Deneb, not Vegalite, but Deneb, because it's Deneb specific. In this documentation, it will tell you about a couple of fields, which are called either selected or something that ends in highlight. And they are for use in precisely what we are doing now. So we are saying that this, if a field is selected, as in a field is clicked on, the, the selected value, that's what we're doing. So our condition is based on this exact thing in the documentation, the selected value. So when you click on something, it is selected. So we are really saying the opacity is based on a condition being, is that field, is anything clicked on? Is anything clicked on? Is it selected? So if selected is equal to off, as in it's not selected, then give me a value. And the value that I want is 0 0.1. Remember, we're speaking about opacity here. So I say, if it is not selected, if it is not clicked on, I want an opacity of 0 0.1. If, however, it is selected, it is clicked on, I want a value of 1, as in completely opaque, not at all transparent. So let's look at that and see how it behaves when we click on a value. Just like that. So now this essentially is my one because this is a selected value and that selected value has an opacity value of one. All of these other values have this opacity value of 0 0.1. If I were to change that and say 0 0.4, you'd immediately see the difference that they are not as transparent as they were before. Put that back down to 0 0.1, now you do see that. So now we do have that behavior in your visualization that when I click on a value, I can see immediately what I've clicked on. Perfect. That works just how we wanted it to work. I'm gonna do a little bit more and this part's really nice and straightforward, nice and fast, because I want to do the same thing, but I want to do it for color. And this is pretty cool. This is what I like, because not only can you train, change the, the, um, the opacity based on what you clicked on, but also the color. This gets pretty cool. And because we've already done it, we can just copy paste it. So we're going to copy this, paste it here. Now, all I gotta do is change the opacity to the color. So the color is based on exactly the same condition. And just to show you how these things work, I'm gonna change it equal to from off to on. So now I'm saying if selected is on. So if it is selected, I want to have a color that I specify. And the color I'm gonna specify is using the hex code like that. If it isn't selected, I want to have, let's stick with the same colors for, for the unselected. Now we have that. Very cool. Love that you can do that. Go back to the report view and have a look at how that works. Works just as you want it to work. The only thing that still doesn't work is this. When you click on that, it's not filtering this. And this is where we're gonna come back to the thing that we changed at the very start. And it was this little layer here. That's the first layer that we copied and pasted. And we changed these values to make it really a lot lighter. Remember? We're gonna use that now. And the way we're gonna use it, we're gonna go down to the X axis of our second layer the one that I've been working on throughout this video, and I'm gonna change the X axis. I don't want to use total points anymore. I want to use total points highlight. So the X axis,
but the layer that sits on top is using the field called total points underscore underscore highlight. Now the IntelliSense does pick it up. So you just type in whatever your measure is, whatever you're using and choose the highlight version. So underscore highlight. And now I will apply that change. At the moment, nothing changes. If I go back to my report, click on the value, there you have it. And just to really show how that's working, you can now see that this little bit here is the highlighted value. This is everything that we specified in our new layer here. It's highlighted to that. What you can see behind that is this, this very first layer. So again, if I were to change the values there to 0 0.1, you'll see you can really almost barely see it at all. So that's where you're seeing those values. They are behind the second layer. So because we're now using the highlight, as in that second layer only shows what's highlighted, that's what you see. So when nothing's highlighted, you see the values as usual. When something is highlighted, works exactly how it should work. Fantastic. Love it. And that's how it works. You can, of course, do the same thing with your, um, your text values. So when you're looking at your data labels to ensure that they, they change as well. Um, another thing is obviously if you have your tooltips on, your tooltip here is going to show your value of the highlighted value, I'm um, sorry, the value of your unselected value, if you will. And this shows you the value within your highlighted value. Works beautifully. That's how you set that up. Hope you like that. Um, it's something that's pretty helpful and to be honest, necessary when you're creating the visualizations. My favorite part is the change in the color when you click on it because they're not necessary it can come in pretty helpful and it looks pretty cool. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, if you liked the video as ever, like it. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button, all those YouTube type things. And uh, yeah, take care, enjoy Power BI, enjoy Deneb, goodbye.